letter from the president? I know. Somebody left you a million dollars. Oh, hi, Paul. Paul, hey, yeah. you remember Jim Layton? Jim Layton, that big mountain man, the one you had the big fight with? Yeah. I'd soon remember an earthquake. Well, Paul, he, he's getting married. Jim Layton's getting married? Yep. He wants me to be his best man. On account I'm the only fella that ever whooped him fair and square. Jim Layton, oh, there's a man that walks around with trouble in a bundle and loves every minute of it. Well, Paul, according to this letter, he's changed. Him changed? Hoss, do yourself a favor. Keep away from him. He's trouble, big trouble, nothing but trouble. Well, but even so, Paul, it's sort of an honor to be invited to be Jim Layton's best man. I mean, up there in the mountain country, his country. Uh, I reckon I ought to be thinking about a wedding present for him or something. Well, it better be portable if you're going to travel all that way. Hey, Paul. <clears throat> you know them little match ponies you got from old Gene Hendricks? Oh, no, you don't. Not them match ponies. You keep away from them now. Why don't you get them something simple? Like a, like a pair of matched bears. Or dueling pistols. Or a lace for the bride. Oh, Paul, lace. Jim Layton ain't gonna marry no gal like that. Now, look, Paul, I'll offer you a fair price for him, and I know you didn't pay much for him. Paul, look, I owe it to him. That was the best dang fight I ever had in my life. Yeah, you almost got yourself killed in that best dang fight you ever had. Now you, you want to be with him again. Oh, I just smell another fight. But you're sitting going, aren't you? Well, tell you what. The match ponies are yours. Thanks, Paul. It's your bones, too. Come in peace, whoever you are. You ain't changed a bit, Jim. Oh, yes, I have, you big hay-shaking farmer. In the old days, I'd have used a real engine. <laughs> Doggone horse, it's good to see you, even if you are a plum sorry-looking sight. Wait till I start prodding you down that aisle. Then we'll see who's going to be the sorry-looking sight. Now, hold on. Just because you whooped me fair and square in your own backyard don't give you no license to forget who's king of this here mountain. And I'll tell you something else. 
you don't get a pot of coffee on about nothing flat, I'm going to give you a chance to try your luck again. <laughs> you better save yourself for that weapon. <laughs> You know something, Jim? You got a good life up here. Yeah, but it gets awful lonesome. Well, I never did mind being lonesome if I was by myself. It's being lonesome with somebody that scares me. It scares me, too. You know, Hoss, uh, I reckon that's the reason that I run all over the country getting into trouble like I did. And I come back home here and seen how Julie had growed up and you sure do get moony-eyed when you talk about her. I reckon you mean it, don't you? Hoss, she's cut right out of these here mountains. But soft, though. And I sure do mean it. Well, sir, I'll tell you, Jim, you're gonna have all the good luck that I can possibly wish down on you. Hoss, that's the reason I ask you to be my best man. You know, with all that pallor, why, you ought to pack a little bit of weight upstairs. Very funny. She probably don't deserve you, even if she has got poor judgment. Shh. What's the matter? Somebody's coming. It's Julie, I think. Well, you figuring on shooting her? You ain't even married yet. Just stop your yapping. I think she's got her paw on. Jim? Yeah, Julie? You got your paw with you? Yeah, but he ain't armed. He promised it wouldn't start anything. Will you talk to him? Where's he at, Julie? Behind the rock. You sure he ain't armed? I searched him myself. All right, sweetheart. Bring him on in. Come on, Paul. Come on. You're gonna get my head shot off. Oh. You lead me to the slaughter like a lamb. Now, you gonna keep your word? Now, look, if I made you a promise, I'm gonna keep it. But it ain't gonna make no difference, because that no good skunk you think you're marrying, he don't know the difference between right and wrong. Now, Carl, I don't think. I know there's gonna be a wet. If he lives that long. <laughs> What's that? Well, this is Hoss Cartwright. He's gonna be best man at our wedding. Uh, Hoss, this is Julie Grizzly Hoss. Hello, Hoss. I, I sure heard a lot about you. Well, thank you, Miss Julie. I've heard a lot about you, too, Mr. Martin Gale. Any friend of Layton's is a mortal enemy of mine. Am I your enemy, Paul? Well, that's different, Julie. You're my daughter. Besides, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Jim, look. Have I been invited here to be best man at a wedding or second for a fight? Stick around. This might be a pallbearer. That's right. Just keep her talking. Get now your you big stop mouth shut her out if you fight. Stop it for both of you. You know, you ain't never broke a promise to me before. Are you going to make this the first? And you, you promised to negotiate with Pa. Did you mean it? All right, let's get it over with. Not just talk this time. You both really try? I'll try. Well, I promised, didn't I? All right, then. Hoss, will you take me for a walk? These two got some palavering to do. Go ahead, Hoss. Yes, ma'am. I'd be happy to, ma'am. If he tries anything, just holler, Julie. Well, I just may not. Well, it's kind of simple, really. Those two are the only real loves of my life. And I can't get them to be friends. What's it all about, anyhow, Miss Julie? Oh, they end there arguing over a piece of land they both lay claim to. A big piece of land? A very, very little piece. 
but a lot of stubborn pride. Sometimes pride's worth more than land out here. Look, how did they come about laying claim to the same piece of land? It was a stake in a card game. They both had the same hand. A pair of trays, ace, jack, four. And they've been arguing over it ever since. That was 14 years ago. Yeah. Well, there's one thing for sure. This sure ain't no atmosphere for a wedding, is it? Oh, sure is quiet in there. That's a bad sign. Means they're up to something. Look, I'll go over and stick my head in and take a peek. Oh, you be careful. They both be real touchy. I know them. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt your conversation, but... I got some stuff in my saddlebags over here I needed to tend to. I was a fool to ever come over here, palaver with a swindling cheek. You ain't gonna bamboozle me out of what's mine. Never again! I don't want what's yours, you belly aching old billy goat. All I want is what's mine. What you're claiming is yours and ain't. I want that fair and square in that poker game. You get knocked, you lost. Boy, will you get out of here? You're getting on my nerves. Now, he's my guest. Don't you go telling him what to do. That's right. Keep your bodyguard close at hand. You're gonna need him, you, you fork-tongued old lizard. Now, watch out what you're saying, old man. Julie's paw or not, there's a limit to what I'm gonna take off of you. Well, hurry up and get to it, Carl. I'm sick of your empty bladder. You talk like you're sick of breathing, do you? Now, listen to me. Why, you two sound like a bunch of old overgrown children. And I sure ain't going to spend the rest of my life listening to you growling at each other. Or maybe one of you losing, holding, killing the other. And I sure ain't going to choose between you neither. So don't make it come to that. Now, you better settle this thing somehow. Oh, Julie, you know I'm a trying to settle it. Yeah, me too, honey. It's just... This lying cheek you're marrying. See, see what he said? You both made me sick. <laughs> you two are blaming everybody but yourself. And that, that poor little girl, she's soaking up the misery from both of you. Ah, oh, simmer down. It ain't as clear cut as all that. Well, it is to me. You wouldn't recognize the solution if it came up and punched you in the gut. I would too. You would, huh? How about you? I ain't heard nothing out of you but a lot of meddling talk. And no solution to nothing. Why, Jim, 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 wait. Wait a minute, Jim. Jim, look. Why don't you give the land to the old man? He's got his self-respect buried there in it, Jim. And I'll guarantee if you do, he'll hand Julie over to you wrapped up in a white ribbon. Now, what about my self-respect? Shoot, I wouldn't be no good to Julie or myself either one without it. I told you one time before, Hoss, what my life has been like. Well, it's just my pride that's all that's kept me alive. Julie knows that as well as anybody else does. Since when's it going to hurt your pride, Jim, to give a little? Well, if I go giving in to old Grizzly now, why, I'll lose everything. Hoss, I've carved a life for myself out of these mountains. I've been called a dirty, no-good, renegade half-breed. I've been locked up, shot up, spit on, but I won. Shoot, I'm king of these here mountains, and I ain't gonna give that up to nobody. Hoss, you tried to understand me one time before, and you, and you saved my life. I'm asking you, just, just string along with me again, will you? Jim, how far is it from here to that little piece of property? I'd kind of like to take a look at it. What's the matter? You want to buy it? Oh, I, I might. If you two ever decide who rightfully owns it. Come on. Let's go take a look at it. All right. Jim, 
Jim, you mean to tell me that that, that rock pile out there is what you fellas have been fighting over all this time? Well, I'll admit it's a little bit dry, but uh, they tell me it used to be a real pretty spot for the creek change course. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't ring it so bad at that. What are you driving at? Well, then, uh, this might have me a little idea. You. There's an easy solution to the problem of who owns that property. <laughs> Ain't no problem. I own it. You arbitrate. I, uh, what? What'd you call me? No, no, Grizzly, I ain't calling you nothing. That ain't what arbitrate means. Arbitrate means that the two of you will go out and get a third party. Somebody that ain't got no stake in neither one of you and somebody that both of you agree on. Now, this third party then does some thinking on the matter and he decides who rightfully owns the property. And then both of you agree to abide by his decision. Oh, now, hold on just a oh, minute. Oh, Pa, he's right. You knew he's right. Why, it's the only way. Sounds fair and square to me. Somewhere in this, there's a trick. I can feel it. I can feel it, too, Pa. I can feel my last chance coming up. Well, supposing I lose this here, whatever that dang word is, does that mean I wasn't cheated? Does that mean I gotta bless the marriage of my only daughter to the, to the man who cheated me? Do it for my sake. Let me marry in peace. Look, the way I see it, it's the only way you two are gonna get by each other without busting heads. What's wrong with knocking heads? It ain't a proper way to bless a marriage, Pa. I want my marriage blessed proper. But, honey, I just don't like this fancy way of settling things. But you do it for me? Please. <laughs> well, who do you want to try first? Well, how about the mayor? Oh, no, not the mayor. I, I didn't vote for him. I told him so, too. What about a judge? Is there a judge in town? Comes by twice a year, but he wouldn't do no how. Dad, blame agent, went and fined me two dollars for busting up a saloon one time. But, Jim, he suspended the sentence. It don't matter. It's a principle of the thing. What I've done to that saloon is worth ten dollars any day. Well, let's try the store clerk. Either you owe me any money? Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Well, at least you're on equal footing. Shopkeeper in my life. <laughs> Me neither. Hey, wake up. Wake up! Grizzly. Jim. S something wrong? Why, Pa and Jim are finally going to settle their land dispute. We need an arbitrator. P please, folks. I got a wife, I got three kids, and I'm allergic to crossfire. Anybody knows I'm not too bright, and I don't, don't, don't know a darn thing about land. You fellas don't have to worry about the money you owe me, okay? Please, don't make me do this.
Griffin. No, I'll forget it. It wouldn't work. What about the Undertaker? Nope. Uh, they were paid him for planting Uncle Jake. Uncle Jake weren't worth planting. What about a doctor? They, they ought to be a doctor in town. They're supposed to be brave and, and honest. No, no. I never paid him for birth and Julie. Oh, we've been through this whole blamed town. But either too scared or one of you rejected him. Uh, somewhere in this town, there's an arbitrator, and I'm going to find him if I have to turn over every stinking rock. I'm going home. Well, I'm going to the saloon. All this thinking just parched me. Yeah, why don't you? I reckon she's fed clean up by now. I don't blame her none, neither. You bad burn lunk yet, why don't you go on after her? That's what she wants you to do, and say something nice to her, too. Dang it, Jim, you don't know nothing about women, do you? All right, Romeo. All right. I'm sorry, Julie. I'm sorry that it couldn't have been simple and, and easy. Sorry? Why should Jim Layton be sorry about anything? Why, he's king of the mountain. Kings don't have to be sorry about nothing. Right now, I don't hardly feel like king of a molehill. Julie, I can't help but what I am. When I asked you to marry me, it was me you said yes to, not something or somebody else. Life sure would have been easier had I turned you down. I reckon it ain't too late to change your mind. It was too late the, the day I met you. Steps, farmer boy? Nope. Just trying to be sociable. And that ain't too easy with you. I don't mean it to be. Grizzly, why don't you swallow a little bit of that pride of yours and give Julie a chance? Now, you gotta start someplace, so why don't you decide on an arbitrator by tomorrow? Now look, farmer boy, don't push me. I just back off. I got ornery blood. Ain't nobody pushing. Oh, yes, there is. You are. All of you are. He just won't let a man grow old in peace. Got to take away everything he's got. Well, you ain't doing that to me, boy. I, I can still look out for myself. Now, just leave me alone. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of all of you. Now, just leave me alone. Dad Burn. If you ain't got a knack for putting together more words and saying less with them than any man I ever met in my life. You see, I need it so badly that I'm not at all wanted. I seem to get run out of town before I even get in. Yeah, it is sort of tough country, ain't it? Yeah, I'm just not cut out for it. Yes, it was all a mistake anyway. I applied for duty at the Borneo mission, but they sent me here instead. Yes, sir. I got a mighty big favor to ask of you. A favor? Biggin. You a Republican? We're not allowed to discuss our political affiliation while under the cloak. 
I'm sorry. Did you ever catch a trout on a feather? I prefer silver spoons myself. What's the difference between a steelhead and a rainbow? If I remember correctly, the steelhead is the marine form of the rainbow trout, uh, more correctly known as uh, Salmo Gardneri. Oh, the steelhead would be Salmo Gardneri Gardneri. What's worth more? Skunk or white weasel pelt? Mm, the weasel. Now, don't you go give me that look like I'm all used to do. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, I've reached my decision. Well, out with it. Oh, yes, the decision. By the moral power vested in me by the Mission Society and approved by the Greater Seminary Council and weighted by the good book, I have examined the facts and looked into my heart and soul for a decision. We're out with it! Uh, please. I, I know very little about poker, but even to the innocent, it's obvious that the hands of the disputants were identical. Now, the logical way to settle that dilemma would have been for one to sell or trade one half of the land to the other. Therefore, my decision as arbitrator is that the land be sold to a third party and the money divided between the disputants. Uh, now, uh, if you will excuse me. Thank you very much, Parson. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, that uh, decision seems most fair to me. Now, me being third party, I'm offering you $200 for that property. That's $100 a piece. Uh, anybody want to cop it? All righty. Looks like it's a deal. And Grizzly, there's your 100 And Jim, there's your 100 Now, since I'm the sole owner of that property out there, it looks like we can stop all this feuding, don't it? Seems to me. You want to shake, Grizzly? Sure, it suits you. You won this round with double talk and fancy doings. Had it figured all the time. Make a fool out of me in front of the whole dang town. Now, Pa, you promised to abide by the decision. You gonna break your word? Well, honey, there are some promises come first before others. You, you come in here with your pocket full of wise sayings, all ready to solve everybody's problems, huh? Sitting up there on your fine horse, all big and fat, huh? Getting yourself some old runt of a parson who don't know the difference between a, a poker hand and a scalping knife to stand in front of the whole town and say, I don't own what I own. And my own daughter, listening to him, siding with him. Your mother had a few things to say to you about that. Out of my way! Don't you talk to me about Ma. She'd have loved seeing you break your word this way. My honor's put out there on that land. It's being stomped on. Ma, I, I don't know what you're talking about anymore. Well, then, uh, I guess maybe there's no more use talking. Cool off, Julie. Look, honey, 
We got our own lives to live. Ain't nothing we can do about it if a stubborn old man wants to walk on everybody that crosses his path. Just ain't fair. Being caught between the two men I love this way. Jill. Let her go. I'll kill him, so help me, I'll... That's all Julie needs for you to kill her. Oh, Hoss, he's looking for a fight. You know that as well as I do. All right. Is that what you want, a fight? Or a marriage? Look, Jim, that old man has put his pride in front of his own daughter's happiness. Now, is that what you want? It's six to five and three to one. Three to one and six to five. Six to five, there ain't no wedding. Three to one, Hayden wins the fight. Now, come on and get in here. What's the matter with you, Bob? Don't you feel lucky? All right, get back down here and get some action here. Get back. Right. Right. How much do you want? Give me what do you want. Give me. It's Pa. I'm just the same size as Mom. That's right, I'm the same size. Uh, on the outside. <laughs> on the inside, too, Pa. And I love you just as much as she did. Uh, but she never went contrary to my thinking, my feelings, like you. <laughs> she was your wife, Pa. And I want to be a wife, too. And be beholden to my husband's thinking and feelings. Not unless to that, that Jim Layton. But, Pa, I love him. And if you love me, you bless my wedding. Not when it's to that sneaking thief. Ow! That burn it hold still. This is gonna be hard enough like it is. What is this? A dressing or a lynching? Well, it's, it's a little bit of both, but better you than me. <laughs> Some friends you turn out to be. Dang it, now hold still. I am. Well, quit shaking then. I ain't a shaking. But you ain't? Hold out your hands. Oh, I ain't been so scared since that bear run me up a tree when I was five years old. What are you scared of? Did you ever get a good look at me? What do you suppose a pretty little thing like that Julie's doing marrying an ugly galoot like me? Dang fine, old Jim, but if I was you, I'd hurry up and get to that church before she changed her mind and backs out. Congratulations, Jim. Bygones is bygones. Thanks a lot, Harry. They sure is. <laughs> You're hooked, Jim. No use tormenting you no more. Might as well shake. <laughs> it's been a long time, Wesley. Say, I want you to meet my good friend and best man, Hoss Cartwright. Howdy. Howdy. How are you, Wesley? Hiya, Hoss. Hi, how are you, sir? Howdy. How are you, sir? Look at her, Hoss. Ain't she so? Mm. <laughs> Julie, how beautiful! Oh, oh, uh, Mr. Layton? <laughs> Give me the ring. Burn it. Here. Now hang on to it. Right. We are gathered here to wed in holy matrimony Jim Layton and Julie Martingale. Here in this conclave of God, we must face our nature and our destiny. By the power vested in me, I hereby declare this ceremony commenced with this stipulation that if there be any man present who has reason that this marriage should not take place, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. I'll be speaking now. 
You ought to be ashamed. This is a church. Jim, you can't find him. If you do, you lose everything. This is a saloon again now. Just stay out of my way, Hoss. Jim, I can't let you do this. That Bernadette just ain't right. Let him go, Hoss. Let them kill each other. Maybe they're right. Maybe it's the way it has to be. Pa, you feeling so old and sorry for yourself has turned you into a foolish old man who's given his daughter a wedding day she'll never forget. I just want to ask you one thing, and it's the last thing I'll ever ask. Why? Tell me why! Uh, Julie, honey, uh, that piece of land used to be real pretty with a stream running through it and poppies growing there. Your mom, she was just 16, she used to go there and pick flowers. I met her there. I promised her that, that, that I'd always keep that place. And you did it on the poker game. And it's the shame of that day that's done this to us. Now, he cheated me! Pa, Pa, nobody cheated you. You could have stopped that a long time ago. It's too late now. I said something about that land. You keep your hatchet face out of my affair, dear. Ain't no concern of yours. Now, come on. Let's get on with the fight. Whoop! Wait a minute, boys. Fight about what? You fellas seem to be forgetting it. I own that property now. You ain't got nothing to fight about, have you? <laughs> All right. Here's your money back. Now it belongs to me again. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That money's just for half of it, even if I did decide to keep it. You see, I still own the other half. Jim? Are you still king of this here mountain, or has your friend here taken it away from you? Well, I'm sorry, Hoss. Now we own her together again, huh? All right, now let's fight and settle this thing once and for Wait all. A Wait a minute. Hold it. You're overlooking another very important fact. And that is that, well, that land just ain't for sale. <laughs> I bought that property fair and square. And most of the people in this room were witness to it. If you two want that property, you're gonna have to fight me for it. Either one of you or both of you. Don't make no difference. Well, all right. <laughs> oh, one side, Jim. I'll take him. <laughs> no, I'll hope him. He's my friend. Now, just a doggone minute. Now, hold on, Grizzly. If you and me go fighting one another, why, we ain't gonna have enough hope and power left to handle him. Tell you what we'll do. We'll flip for him. All right. Uh, I'll take his. Thanks, horse. Tails. Oh, shucks. It's gonna be different this time. You'd win me. Well, if there's one thing in this world you got plenty of, it's win. Come on, Jim. Oh. 
Grizzly, any doubt in your mind who's king of the mountain now? most of the fighting, you can still be king of the mountain if you want. We don't let no outsider come in here telling us what to do, huh? What about the land? Well, remembering's the important part. Let him keep it. He bought it fair and square, didn't he? I mean, we better get that big gun from outside where he can get some air, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, Jim. Uh, let me. It's more fit. Somebody better go get a bucket of water. Julie! Get on with the wedding. Come on in, sweetheart. I got you for your power changes. He's mine again. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. <laughs> you going inside? I'll join your man, Jim. I'm. Uh, I'm still your best man, ain't I? 
You sure are, partner. You know something? I think I won after all. <laughs> Three days? It seems a lot longer to me. Why? You just saw her just that once when we brought her home. She's been up in her room ever since. Well, I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about what it's been like to live with Pa. I've never seen him so upset. Pa's got quite a problem. He's got a problem. He's got a tiger by the tail is what he's got. That's a great sense of responsibility. I mean, the chief doesn't give gifts lightly. Gift? That's some gift. I'll bet you this ends Pa's annual cultural trek to the Paiute Nation. Oh, I don't know. I think Pa will probably return a favor next year and bring the Chiefs something nice, like a lighted stick of dynamite. <laughs> yeah, or a, or a loco steer. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe he'll make a gift to you, Hoss. <laughs> Very funny. I'm glad somebody's happy about something. No luck, huh? No, she won't eat. She give you any reason? She won't talk either. Look, Paul, maybe you ought to just give up and... And, and what? I'd be very happy to give up. Somebody else will take the responsibility. The doctor won't even come out here. He says, eventually, her hunger will overcome her stubbornness. The sheriff was no help either. Well, I thought Roy was kind of droll. Droll? He's downright sarcastic is what he was. Well, Adam, what did uh, Roy say? Well, he suggested that uh, Pa get himself another watch, like a grandfather's clock, and maybe renegotiate with the chief. <laughs> Very funny. No, well, he's got a point there. You might just try to explain to him that things aren't working out very well. Adam, you know perfectly well you can't return a gift to a Paiute chief. Besides, he meant what he said. They'd kill her. No eat now, food not fit to eat. All right, Hopsing, we'll eat now. Indian girl no like Hopsing food? I said we'll eat now. She loco. Hopsing, we're going to eat right now. Will you stop yelling in my ear? Hey, Paul, I got an idea. Listen, all this good food, she gets the smell of this, she'll eat, I guarantee you. I'll just make a plate of it. I'll take it up there to her, and I'll hold it out in the hall, and just let her get a whiff of it through the door. I guarantee you she'll eat. Uh, that's not a very good idea, Hoss. Uh, It'll work, Paul. I tell you, it's not a very... Well, so she eats, then what? Well, she should be given a chance to learn to live with her own kind of people. She's been living as, a, as an Indian since she was a child. It won't be easy for her. What do you want us to do to help? I suppose we should be understanding and patient. Help her make an adjustment. She ain't hungry. Right, Paul. Does it? So what are you going to do, Paul? We'll give that lady a very necessary talking to. What's he mean by that, Adam? Well, you must remember that expression from when you were a kid. <clears throat> you, don't, you don't mean he's going to. Hey, 
Now, we've tried every reasonable way we know. But you still persist in this stubborn refusal to do anything we ask you to do. Well, I'm giving you three seconds to get downstairs hey, to death. Stay on your mother's shadow! Huh? I know that the Paiutes taught you many unpleasant expressions. So I'm not going to hold that against you, young lady. I spit on your grandmother's Come shadow! Here. Boy, she's a feisty one. She throws a pretty mean plate, too. You know, frankly, I sort of wish Bo hadn't gone back up there. It's a long ride this time of night to fetch a doctor. Oh, I think I put my money on Pa this time. Oh, yeah? How much? Well, Pa? She'll be down in a minute. Hop Singh? I got a fresh plate here. Plate in bed. at the same we had upstairs. How do you make it so shiny? I got two of everything so that you could uh, 
Well, um, alternate them and keep them clean that way. It's, it's pretty, isn't it? What is this? Oh, uh, that's, uh, well, that's, that's a, it's a, a camisole. It's a, it's another thing. That's a, that's another thing, and that's, well, these are, these are all uh, under things. What is under thing? Well, another thing is, uh, you, well, you, 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 you wear it under your dress. Oh, this under dress is too much. I not can move. Under this, I not wear it. Joni. Look, Joni, if you're going to live like a white woman, you got to dress like a white woman. Now, be a good girl, and you go on upstairs and put these things on. And, and... Put these on, too. They're, uh... Well, they're, they're shoes, uh... Boots. Indian man much kinder to woman than white man. Adam, where you been? Uh, I was over at Clem White's. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that uh, traded some grain for some hogs. No, 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 no. We took care of that three weeks ago. I was over to see about selling him some stock. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I've been uh, believing everything up to you boys lately. I'm sure to put the extra work on you, but... Uh, we don't mind the extra work. It just... Well, I've been really making some good progress with the girl. She's up in her room now, putting on some decent clothes that I bought her. And then what? Uh, just what is it that you want to do with her? But we got to prepare her for the world. Got to help her adjust. Expect me to get stinking thing on feet. We want feet. We can't speak. Let's go yet. See you, Tom. I, I guess I got him a couple of sizes too small. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about it. She'll adjust. Have you boys noticed uh, Jones' new clothes? Sure, yeah, probably real nice. Some clothes are it, Paul. Real fashion plate, yes, sir. Sorry. I made a mistake. I've been forcing things on you. Trying to make you want things which you didn't want or even care about. So, uh, you're free to go now. Free? Yeah. You mean I do what I want? Yes, of course, son. Not your jailer. Good. I go now. Where will you go? Back to my people. You hate the white world so much that you go back to the Paiutes knowing that they'd kill you. There is other tribes. These other tribes? They'd, uh, they'd accept a Paiute cast off, a white girl? Knowing English, my mother teach me not make me white. She die when I ten. 
only world I know is Indian world. Well, I must find our own world to live in. I just hope that our world might please you. So now you can, you can pick your own. What's the matter? Joan just came busting through the living room like she was on her way to a fire or something. Yeah, I know. She's going away. Adam, would you saddle her horse for her? It would start, Pa. Should she at least wait until morning? And when you're young and you're running away from something that you're, you're afraid of or you don't understand, I guess it doesn't make any difference whether it's day or night. your way. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to? Yes. I think about what you say. I try your world and, and see. Takes a little patience. Besides, you haven't buttoned them properly. Now, look, I'm going to show you this, this once more. I never learned to walk in this, or dress right, or eat with fork. Johnny, you can do anything you set your mind to do in this world if you just take a little time and patience. But I start so late to learn what others learn as child. You're not much more than a child yourself. I'm not child. Ryote, son of chief, would marry me. It doesn't make you a woman. Joan, in our world, in your world now, people marry for different reasons than they do in the pirate world. Here we uh, usually marry for love. I tell you before, that is word I learn in English, but it is only word. Well, when it happens to you, it'll be more than only word. You'll meet someone someday, and he'll be different from other men. And when he talks, his voice will have a special meaning just for you alone. And when he touches you, it'll be as if you've been waiting for that touch all your life. When it happens, you'll know. It's like like something magic. Yeah. Up you get. Boy, I need magic to walk in this stinking. In this shoe. All right. Practice. 
Let go, bud. What could be so all fired funny in there? Well, whatever it is, it's all right with me as long as it keeps him laughing. I was like you. You never make mistakes. Oh, don't I? I got that dress about ten sizes too big for you, didn't I? <laughs> However, according to Lady Stanhope, men are forgiven mistakes in the social world. Ladies must know. Why don't you leave that alone for a while? There's an article here about Senator Douglas uh, I'd like you to read. He's a man I admire very much. According to Senator Douglas, if war comes between the states, the silver of our T territory, territory hmm? will be of vital importance. What are you laughing about? Don't be saying anything funny. I was remembering that book of etiquette I've been reading these last few weeks. Oh, what did you find amusing about it? Well, it was just that drawing of all those knives and forks, you know, that they use. And here, I struggle with one. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. Pa's been lecturing me about them for years, and I still get confused past one of each. Men are forgiven mistakes in the social world, but ladies must know. Now, I wonder who made that proclamation. I think it was Lady Stanhope of England who wrote the Book of Etiquette. I see. Well, I don't think we have to worry about entertaining Lady Stanhope at the Ponderosa. Uh, Adam, excuse me. Um, Joan, did you find anything interesting in the newspaper lately? Yes, I did. I was reading a most interesting article about the silver lobby in Washington. According to Senator Douglas, if war comes between the states, the silver of our territory could well be of vital importance politically. According to Senator Douglas, the economic situation, both for the North and the South, would be unlimited. And so from the time of the end Egyptians, silver has influenced the destinies of men and nations, according to Senator Douglas. That's very interesting. According to Senator Douglas. Uh, Joan, I, I, found, I, I found the conversation most informative. Thank you. Well, I will leave you, gentlemen, to your coffee and brandy. I have some sewing waiting for me in my room. I must admit she's a lot different than she was two months ago when we first saw her. Yeah, she's <clears throat> become an interesting composite. What do you mean? A composite of Lady Stanhope, Senator Douglas, and Ben Cartwright. 
All right, you accomplished what you set out to do. Well, now what are you going to do with it? You got a plan? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I, I do have a plan. She'll have a... She'll have what every woman deserves. A chance for her rightful place in society. As a wife. You, uh... <clears throat> you already got somebody picked for her? Well, of course not. She's going to make her own choice. There are plenty of red-blooded men in the territory. Just wait till get a look at her. What are you, uh, figuring on doing, advertising her? Well, as a matter of fact, yes, I am. In a way. We're going to give a party this Saturday night and invite every eligible bachelor in the territory. She'll be fighting them off by the dozen, you'll see. According to Senator Douglas, if war comes between the states, the silver of our territory could well be of vital importance politically. According to Senator Douglas, the economic possibilities both for the North and the South are enormous. Let us take, for example, ten basic economic advantages for the North. First, uh, Mr. Mr. Cartwright. Right. Oh, well, uh, don't let me interrupt. Please go on. Oh, no, sir. Uh, not interrupting at all, sir. No, sir. Uh, I believe we could uh, use some of that punch. Yeah. Well, uh, what were you talking about? Senator Douglas's monetary theories. Well, Jonah, you know, a subject like that doesn't have too much appeal for young fellas. Uh, why don't you talk about other things? What other things? Well, uh, tell you things like, uh, uh... Oh, Tom! Tom Bellow, come on over here. First time I've seen you tonight. Now, you know Joan, of course. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, we had a long talk about Senator Douglas. Well, that's not a very exciting subject for a young girl. Now, Tom, I know you can do better than that. I'll tell you what. Why don't, uh, why don't you and Joan go outside, get a breath of fresh air? Show her the moon. <laughs> now, there's a subject that young girls never get tired of, see? <laughs> go ahead now, along with you, both of you. <sighs> Little music. <laughs> Tom Bellows just took Joan out for a walk in the moonlight. Think Lady Stanhope would approve? Well, never mind Lady Stanhope. I think I understand young people better than she does. Which reminds me. I haven't seen you fellas uh, dancing with any of the girls tonight. What girls? Now, you're so busy inviting eligible bachelors, you forgot to invite any eligible girls. <laughs> Thank you, so dear. It's important. I'm not going to let him spoil your party. Yes, and he told me the reason for this party. If I had known, I could have saved you the trouble. I have no need for these young men. There's no magic with them. No magic. party wasn't the success you expected. Well, I'm very surprised at Tom's behavior. Really very surprised. Maybe Tom didn't understand the circumstances. What circumstances? Well, maybe like she said, Paul, she, she just ain't interested in them young fellas. <laughs> She's a young girl. <laughs> maybe she likes more mature men like you. What's all this nonsense about? Well, maybe it ain't so much nonsense, Paul. Maybe... Maybe what? Maybe she loves you. <laughs> that girl doesn't even know the meaning of the word. Oh, indeed I do. Oh, there's some stock that's got to be taken care of out in the barn. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to help him, Pop. I'm more practical. I'm going to bed.
It took me a long time to realize what had happened to me. Just as it will take you time. No. Take time. You'll realize how right it is. You're the finest, most wonderful man in the world. And I love you very much. Good night, Benjamin. Darling. Breakfast will be ready in a moment. Oh. Uh, well, I'll wash up. That would be all for now, Hobson. Thank you. Benjamin, you've taken time and thought about it? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, Joan, I have. Then you understand. Uh, Joan, I, I want to ask you a question. Where did you get this idea? Last night at the party, when I looked at all those young men, then I looked at you, and then I knew because the magic was there. What magic? Well, the magic you told me was love. It happened just as you said it would. Yeah, but... oh. oh. Joan, I, uh, when I told you that, I, I wasn't talking about me. No, no, this, this feeling this that you have... This love I have. This feeling that you have, it, it isn't love, Joan. It's, 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 well, it's what students feel for their teachers sometimes. It's not what you think. I know how I feel. It's how you feel that's important. Well, I, I know how... This conversation is ridiculous. Not according to Senator Douglas. Senator... What has Senator Douglas got to do with it? Senator Douglas said that all things can be settled logically if intelligently applied. It has nothing to do with logic. It has to. Uh, Joan, look at me. I'm the proof. Joan, Look please. at me. Would jo you look at me? I'm looking at you. All right. Now. What has this got to do with Senator Douglas's immortal cliches about logic? Am I not what you made me? Did you not say the night of the party that I would make a perfect mate for any man? Well, yes. No. I, I would. Yes, as an artist would speak of a creation. There, you admitted it. Admitted what? You said that you created me. Now, would you create something that you hated, something that you didn't care John, about? John, well, would you? John. No, you wouldn't. You'd create something that you loved. Me. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, love has nothing to do with logic. It has everything to do. Joan, let me give you a very pertinent logical fact. I'm old enough to be a father. Oh, pooh. If a Paiute's wife dies, he looks for the youngest next wife he can find. Uh, one who can work hard and give him many sons. I, I, Joan, I have enough sons. Well, I'll give you more. Bigger than Hoss, smarter than Adam, and handsomer than little Joe. Joan, now listen to me. I am not the man for you. I'll show you that you are. You hold me. There's uh, an old Paiute custom. Joan, we are not Paiutes. Well, we can borrow the custom for just a little while. Joan, please. Joan, will you stop this? Oh, sorry, Pop. <clears throat> Come in, boys. Benjamin has some news to tell you. I, I got some chores to do. Benjamin? You were gone. Yeah, well, I uh, had some things to do around the barn. Yeah. You got something on your mind? 
Hmm? Same thing's on your mind. Joan. She thinks she's gonna marry you. What? That's, that's nonsense. I, I told her so. Well, she thinks she's gonna marry you. It sure isn't nonsense to her. Well, of course it's nonsense. She's not gonna marry me. <laughs> she's not in love with me. Well, it may take her time, but she'll realize that. Well, I don't know if you got that much time. You know one of the things she wanted to look at in town? Wedding dresses. Wedding dresses? Now, you always taught us that the, uh, the hurt you feel when you tell the truth is a little shorter and less painful than the hurt you feel when you, uh, don't face the truth. The hurt will go away. I promise you. In time, you'll have to look close to even see the scar. I, I have a close and very dear friend in San Francisco. Her only daughter died about, about five years ago, and I know that she would welcome you as a companion, even as a daughter. You don't believe I love you. I believe that you're misinterpreting the word. No. You told me. You said one man will seem different. His voice special. His touch magic. That is how I feel. Joan, the way you feel now, you'll feel so differently five or ten years from now when you're a mature I, woman. I don't care about five or ten. Ten years from now, I care about now. I care about how I feel now. But you don't love me, do you? I love you. But not, not as you, you think I, oh, you want me to love you. I love you as I, I love Adam, horse, and little Joe. That isn't what I mean. You just don't understand. Maybe I do. The tears for lost youth are just as bitter. The cry, where were you when I was young? Just as painful. You don't love me. You don't love me. I'm consumed with... with jealousy and envy for the young man who will one day marry you. I, uh, I wired my friend in San Francisco, and I talked to Chief Kiyoe again. His son has married, and he says that you are welcome. Go back to the tribe if you wish. So you see, you, you have two worlds from which to choose. Two worlds? I have no world. destroyed the world of the Indian for me, and now you've destroyed your world for me, too. I'll, uh, I'll get the ticket for San Francisco. Sorry you're unhappy. Sorry my father's unhappy. He didn't mean to hurt you. He doesn't care anything about me. I think he cares a great deal. No, he cares nothing. 
My life is empty. Your life is just beginning. And I think your heart is a little too young to break. The bruise will heal. But my father, when he thinks of you in the future, will feel sad and guilty. Because he'll remember you now in your unhappiness and blame himself. Well, he should. Why, just because he tried to help you? He's given you a future, no matter what you may think now. And if you love him, give him something too. Take the guilt away from him. Let him remember you now without unhappiness. You teach as well as your father. Thank you, Adam. Guess we better be getting aboard. Excuse me. Pardon me. Are you going to San Francisco? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh. Well, then we'll be fellow passengers. My name is Joan Wingate. I'm John Turner. Oh. Well, I have the uh, fare all arranged. Well, good. I guess we can get on board. Here, well, let me help you. Oh, well, this is John Turner. He's going to San Francisco, too. How do you do? Turner? Goodbye, and thank you, Benjamin. Oh. It's gonna be all right, Adam. Yes, yes, she's gonna be all right. Well, she'll be all right, Pa. Why not? She's got everything you taught her. A few of her own. Like courage. Magic. Sorry, Joe. Jim, you sort of flushed me there all of a sudden, like. Yeah. How come you didn't wake me up? You done done all the work? Boss, believe me, I feel a lot safer with you asleep. <sighs> well, Joe, it's, it's that dad burn tonic Paul gives me. Just keeps me tuckered out all the time. Yeah, well, listen, I just want you to keep taking that tonic, all right? You keep taking that tonic till you get rid of the fever. And now listen. Listen, listen. I gotta go over to the sheriff's office now and deliver a message from Pa, all right? Now, you come on over here. I want you to sit down over here so you'll be out of the way and out of trouble, all righty? Oh, you'll be all right. Come on, right over here, big brother. Just sit down there. There you go. Now, listen. Listen to me for a minute. Mm -hmm. I want you to sit here, take it easy, relax, stay out of trouble, 
Sit and watch a woman go by. Yeah. Anything okay. you say, Joe. Right. Hey. Hey, here comes one now. really was nice, what? Pause. I hope I never have to take that tonic. you in the town? I was getting supplies. Pa wanted me to tell you he was sorry he couldn't make that poker game last night. We were kind of busy. Well, I imagine with the fire and all, did it do much damage to the house? Nah, we managed to get it put out pretty quick. How in tarnation did Hoss manage to set that house afire in the middle of the night? Well, I'll tell you, Roy, near as we can figure. He was downstairs frying some catfish and greens, and the skillet turned over. Frying catfish and greens in the middle of the night? Well, you know, he gets pretty funny appetites when he's got that fever. He's got the fever? Yeah. Oh, at uh, spring, huh? You didn't bring him into town, did you? Yeah, but don't worry about it, Roy. I got that tonic in him. He's half asleep in front of the store. Joe, I don't think it was very fair to bring him into town. Now, I know that Hoss can look and act as natural as anybody else, but all of a sudden, boom, and he's in trouble. You remember what happened last year? Over back at the saloon there, when he got tangled up with all them barrels and stuff? Man, what a mess. Yeah, well, what are we gonna do, Roy? Really, what are you gonna do? You can't lock a man up until he's over the fever. You just can't do that. Well, I don't know. It's in the public interest, the public safety. You know, maybe we got a point. What do you mean? About locking him up. Hey, your deputy Clem. Clem, he's on vacation now, isn't he? Yeah, he's on vacation, but what? You ain't thinking what I'm thinking you're thinking, are you? Well, now, why not? You're going to need some help around the office, right? So you can take care of your duties outside? Well, yeah, sure, but not Hoss. Well, why not, Hoss? He can do the work, Roy. Besides, he'd be safe in here. And then at night, when it was time to go to bed, just let him go in the cell, flop down on a cot, and you lock the door. Kind of like having a pet, wouldn't it? Right. But the responsibility would be... Roy, responsibility is your job. This badge makes it your responsibility, Roy. The responsibility of the safety of this whole town. Look, visualize for a minute what would happen. If my brother Hoss was left running loose for two weeks. Besides, I'll give you some of that tonic. He sleeps half the time. The tonic? Sure. Listen, here's what we'll tell him. We'll say Hoss because of me. Seemed awful quiet to me. <laughs> God dang, Vino. It's warm. Yeah. Dang, messenger must have snuck in here when I had my back turned left. At. Hey, it's from Rimrock, Utah. Oh, you remember that Earl Tusher, that fella that sought his way out of my jail last fall? <sighs> Terrible shame. Well, the sheriff over there is holding him, and I got to go pick him up. It's a terrible long ride from here to Utah, Roy. Yes, sir. Well, I better go and arrange passage and... Uh, say, Hoss. Yeah, what's the matter, Roy? I was just thinking I'll be gone several days uh, picking up Earl Tusher and... Now, Roy, don't you worry about nothing here. I'll take care of everything. Yeah, I know, but I was just thinking maybe you better get back to the Ponderosa. Your Paul might need your help. Now, Roy, I promised you I was going to help you, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, I know, but I didn't figure that I was going to be out of town, and it's a big responsibility running this. I'll tell you what. We'll ride out to the ranch and see what your pa thinks, huh? Yeah, how you say, Roy. All right, yeah, I'll just get the keys, and we'll lock up. Roy! Oh, Roy! You busted my hand! Roy, I'm terrible sorry. Let, let me help you with the doctor. I don't need no help to the doctor. I didn't bust my foot. I busted my hand. My gun hand, too. 
I gotta think of that Earl Tusher, and I gotta go up there, and if I get, I'll, I don't know what to do. I'm going to uh, Utah. I gotta go over there and pick up old Earl. Uh... Tusher? Yeah, Earl Tusher. Yeah, well, Earl ain't none too bright. I figured he'd get himself caught sooner or later. But uh, how come you're going? Well, you know, Roy couldn't go on account of his hand. You know, he, you know. Oh, no, I didn't know Roy hurt his hand. Well, I reckon he knows what he's doing. Where are they holding Earl? Rimrock. Hey, there goes she is. That's the prettiest red hair I ever did see. Oh, so you say rim rock or red rock? Yeah, red. Real red. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here it is. Red Rock. Yeah, yeah you got to change the junction. Yeah, went and run the store, huh? All right. Here's your ticket. Been aiming to drop in on old Grundy. Got to buy me a new set. Boss. Huh? Here's your ticket. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Herbert. That'll be $10. Well, that's a powerful lot of money to be spending on a man like old Earl, ain't it? <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Hoss. Yeah. Herman, you got a piece of paper I can borrow? Sure. There you are. It really hurts. Yeah. It's my gun hand. It's busted. Now I can't take a chance on going after old Tusher. I just got to get somebody else to do it. Of course you do. Well, look. Roy, I'll go after him, or one of the boys will go after him. Not Hoss. No, not Hoss. Where is Hoss? Well, I don't know. He wasn't here when I got back from the doctor. Maybe he went home. I hope. Howdy, Sheriff. Ben. Herman, what do you got there, boy? I got a note for you. It's from Hoss. He says, Roy, I sure am sorry about all the trouble I caused you, so I figure the least I can do is to go get Earl Tusher. Why am I coming, Hoss? When did he give you that? Just a little while ago. Just before he left on the stage. Oh. Whoa! Good evening, Al. Well, howdy, Mr. Simmons. Any passengers tonight? I got one. Reckon oh. he must have fallen off to sleep. Look at that. Huh? Uh, yeah. Well, folks are never at their best when they're asleep. Sure ain't. Yeah, well, good night, Al. Good night, Miss Simmons. Red Rock. Huh? Red Rock. Oh. oh. Hey, you told me where I can find the sheriff? Home in bed, but I'd advise against it. You mean there ain't nobody over there in the jail? Can't say. Well, who's looking after the prisoners? Well, in the first place, I don't know if we got any. In the second, if we do, they'd be in better sleep like everybody else. <laughs> That's a real lively little town you got here. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're expecting. It's past nine o'clock. You, you mean you ain't even got no, no passengers waiting or nothing? It's the end of the line. Yeah, sure is. More than one way. Huh? Uh, look, where can I spend the night? Oh, it's boarding house across the road. A bang on a bell real hard, because it takes a heap of banging to wake up old Smithers. Yeah. Look, are you sure that the Look, sheriff... Look, mister, whatever your business is, it'll have to wait till morning. Bang. 
bank's been robbed, all right. Safe door swinging wide open. <gasps> Do tell. How much they get? Every penny. I don't know what to say. Now, Jesse, nobody's blaming you. I'm sure you took every precaution. Yeah, but, well, I, I, I thought I had, and I still feel responsible. Sheriff, I want you to know that I'll do everything in I my reckon, power. I reckon we all know that, Jesse. Now, why don't you go get yourself a cup of coffee? Yeah, I think i better get a oh. cup of coffee. Yeah. <clears throat> well, maybe something that might more bracing. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I still want to help. You know that. We know that, Jesse, but there's nothing you can do. Take him along, with you, Jed? Th thank you, Sheriff. That's all right. Thank you, Jed. up beautifully. All right. All right. Let's get down to brass tacks. Now, anybody hear anything unusual last night? Any kind of a commotion? You see anything suspicious? Anybody lurking around the bank or, or something? Any strangers in town? I brought in a stranger last night, Sheriff. You did? Come to think of it, that fella acted mighty peculiar. He wanted to know where the sheriff was and if there was anyone down to jail. What'd you tell him? I told him his business just have to wait till morning. Hmm. Appears like it didn't. I don't know, Sheriff, though. On second thought, that fella didn't strike me as being brainy enough to rob a bank. Well, he could have been pretending, you know. He didn't strike me as being brainy enough to pretend, either. Law officers better judge of that. Which way did he go? Oh, over the... There he comes now! <laughs> How's that? Hey, look, Sheriff, I've been looking all over town for you. I... You're under arrest. Let's string him up. <laughs> for what? For robbing the bank, that's for what? Me? Yes, sir, you better come along, Pete, for me, boy. Hey, wait a minute. Get around, oh, Jeff. Wait. Wait. wait a minute. You're making a big mistake. Hold on, Wait a minute. What you doing with that? What the hell is you fooling, Sheriff? Sheriff, this ain't right. Wait, wait, I'll tell you the truth here you now. Uh, uh, this is the first crime we've had in ten years. I, I don't rightly know what's proper. Stand side, Sheriff. We'll handle the whole thing. Now, come on, fellas. Now, get him up. Wait, come, on, come on, now. Get him up on the horse. Hold on. Oh, oh, hey, oh, wait a minute. You can't hang that man. Hold on. Stand by. The racket you're making, I know you ain't no engine. Come on out from behind them rocks now and have some coffee. I must say I'm a mite curious as to what you're doing here. You're too far off the trail to be sightseeing. Oh, much obliged. You two go around that way, boys. I'll go around that way. They after you? Hot tail it in that tent. Howdy, Sheriff. Get on, have a cup of coffee. Oh, can't stop now. Hot on the trail of a bank robber. Great big fella. Named Horse Cartwright. Can't say I know anybody by that name. Well, I know you wouldn't know him. Just thought you might have seen him. Big fella like that? If he was in my camp, I sure would know him, wouldn't I? Yeah, I reckon you would. Yeah, well, I've been here all day. Yeah, uh, must have figured wrong. Caught his horse back there, figured he might have headed this way. You're welcome to look around, Sheriff. Maybe he's in the tent. <laughs> Yeah, no, if he was here, you would have seen him. And the size of that belly, Chef. Stooping over, looking in a few tents wouldn't hurt you none. You got a provoking way of saying things, Miss Looney. Ain't no wonder you're out here alone living by yourself. Come on. You can come out now. Ma'am, I... I don't mind telling you, you scared the daylights out of me in there for a minute. You know, I'd dang near soon hang to death as be scared to death. Oh, I knew he wasn't going to look in the tent. One way to confine your enemies is to tell them the truth. 
Did you ever notice how little attention people pay to the cruise? Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it. Oh, Ma'am, in that case, how, how come you didn't tell him that I was here? Well, now, he didn't actually come right out and ask me. Besides, I figured I'd kind of like to know why he was getting away. Oh, they... They think I robbed a bank. Well, did you? Oh, no, certainly not, ma'am, no. Then why did you run away? Well, you see, they, they were all so excited. They, they wouldn't listen to me. They wouldn't let me explain that I'm, I'm Horse Cartwright from Virginia City, and they all got to talking about ropes and lynching and hanging, and well, I just didn't figure there's much future in me hanging around. How come you didn't keep riding until you got clean away? Well, I, uh... Oh, I... I fell off my horse, ma'am. Oh. Well, it's a good thing you stumbled into this camp, boy. You ain't safe out there alone, you know. Well, first thing in the morning, I'll go into town and see what I can find out. You mean you believe me? Well, of course I believe you. But, ma'am, you don't know nothing about me. With all the experience I've had, you think I don't know the pure truth when I hear it? Well, I'm, I'm certainly obliged to you, Mrs. Uh... My name's Lulabelle, Miss Lulabelle Watkins. Folks around here call me Looney. Looney? Looney, that, that don't sound much like Lulabelle, does it? It ain't. It's short for lunatic. Oh, well, come on, let's get some shut eye. Yeah, I'll, uh... I'll just bed down out here. No, no, no. Come on now. You're going to stay in the tent. Oh, ma'am, I... Come on. Don't argue oh. with me. You're going to be safer in there. Come ma on. Get, get your in tent. there. I, I don't yeah. want to take your tent, ma'am. Yeah. Now, don't worry, boy. You boy you almost knocked that tent down. Oh, ma'am, it's the fever. It's on me. The fever? What do you mean? Well, ma'am, seemed like every year about this time, I, I get the fever. And I do some of the most exasperating things. You got the spring fever, boy? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> got a bad? Real bad. I got just the thing for you, boy. Here. Now, here, you take a good slug of this. I had a mule once had the fever. This cured him just fine. Sulfur and molasses. No, no, it's my own concoction. Go on, go on, drink it. Takes a little time to take effect, but when it does, bam, you're cured. A mule just fine. Now you go on and keep swigging that, and I'll go to town and scout around. Now, boys, you gotta admit five hundred dollars reward ought to make it worth your while to catch this here fella Cartwright. But remember one thing: we want him alive. Somebody gets careless and kills him. Before we find out where he hid that money, why well, we're gonna be in a fix. Sheriff, you offering five hundred dollars for Cartwright or the fella that robbed the bank? Looney, don't you ever get tired of asking them fool questions? You know Cartwright was the only stranger in town when the bank was robbed. Looney, don't you think he done it? Nope. Well, how come? He told me so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, now you know what to do. <laughs> Can't you do nothing right? Now, Warden... Now, you... Warden, nothing? While I'm out hiding the money, you're just Shh. sitting here messing things up. Well, how was I to know that Cartwright would bust out and run away? But when he run, why don't you shoot him? Well, you know I don't hold it with violence like that. Two years we've been sitting here waiting for a stranger to come along and be our pigeon. And now you let him run away. Shh, will you keep your voice? <clears throat> Sheriff's out looking for him, isn't he? And if he finds him and don't find the money, a finger could point at us. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Now, I just got to find that Cartwright. You know... There's something about that loony. Now, I said that I'd go along with you, didn't I? Oh, I didn't mean it that way. 
I think I'll mosey on up to her place and have a look around. Oh, dear. If she's mixed up in this, we're in real trouble. Well, she can bleed just like anybody else. Oh, please, Ward, will you... must have went off. Uh, that's it. I went into the tent to get me some more of that tonic, and I... And you lit a match. And I... Yeah, I lit a match. Oh, oh. Boy, for a body with as big a head as yours, you make mighty little use of it. Gold! 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 Look at this! Gold! Well, this is the highest grade of ore I found around here in 20 years of prospecting. You mean, you mean that that... You found yourself a gold mine, boy. It's not mine, ma'am. It's yours. Oh, after 40 years, you come along and prove I've been sitting here on it all this time. Oh, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't get too interested in gold at the moment. You ain't interested in gold? What good is it going to do me, ma'am? All I can do is go out and buy myself a fancy funeral after they get through stringing me up. Oh, now, I'm not going to let them string you up, boy. How are you going to prevent it? Well, now, first of all, we got to get our finances straight. Do you know anything about mining gold? Not a thing. I figured I'd let you handle all that. Well, that's the ticklish part of it. I don't know nothing about mining gold, neither. I thought you just told me you'd been prospecting for 40 years. Well, prospecting means looking for gold, not finding it. You know, a rich vein like this runs clean through this mountain. It's going to take a lot of know-how to get it out. Yeah. Sort of like finding counterfeit money, ain't it? Looks like there ought to be some way we could profit from it, though. Oh, there's bound to be, boy. Let's sleep on it tonight, huh? Yeah. Maybe we'll dream up an answer. Come on. Boy, it's a good thing we struck gold. Takes money to afford an appetite like yours. Yeah. You dream up anything last night? Well, first off, we got to file a claim on the land. I can do that in Red Rock. Yeah. You know, anybody sees them samples, if they're as rich as you say they are, they're going to dig this mountain and plumb out and us. Nobody's going to find out about the ore. I don't need to get it assayed. Well, there's got to be some reason for a prospector filing claim on land. Homesteading. Yeah. All right, so we file clean. Then what do we do? Well, you don't know nothing about mining, and I don't know nothing about mining. How do you feel about selling it? Suits me. There's just one hitch. Yeah, I figured it would be. What is it? Money. You got any? Filing takes money. I lost my wallet when the posse is chasing me. Ain't you got none? Nope, not a cent. Well, sort of looks like we're out of business, don't we? Not exactly. We still got one valuable asset. Yeah? Well, let's use it. What is it? You. You're worth $500. Yes, lady. You want me to go to jail just, just so we can get the reward? Well, now, that's a hard way of putting it. But with you in jail, the real Robert feels safe and give himself away. do make it sound sort of simple at that. Then you'll do it? Dad, burn it. I've been thinking I ought to turn myself in anyhow. Might as well kill two birds with one stone, I reckon. <laughs> Have some more Tommy boy. You're thinking better. Mm, Ma'am, we got company. Well, you're in luck, Ward. Another five minutes and we'd been gone. You don't need to go pointing that gun at us. Ain't nobody unfriendly here. Oh, yes, there is. Me. What do you mean? Well, you might say I'm representing the law. Taking in a wanted man. 
I got a feeling he's talking about me, ma'am. You're feeling right. Well, just keep in mind that I'm worth $500. Alive. Might be you're worth more dead. What do you mean by that, Ward? You went on that bank robbery? Now, I'm just doing my duty as a citizen, taking in a wanted man. Hand me that rifle. Well, let's go. And you, a woman, you make sure you stay right here. And don't try nothing foolish. for a little headache, and that's a lot kinder than he would have been to you. He probably would have shot you and then told everybody he was trying to escape. He probably would have. Ma'am, I'm much obliged to you again. Ah, and that's nothing. <laughs> Be doggone. Where'd you find him, Looney? He found me's more like it. Oh. Come on. Stay here, Nelly. I didn't ask, big fella. Yeah. Yeah. Well, looks like we're all gonna get our money back. Now, you boys clear out and tell folks to quit worrying, yes? Oh, that's all right. Yes, sir. <laughs> I have a little talk with that prisoner. Ain't you forgot something, Sheriff? Oh, the reward money. Well, it's right here, just like I said it would be. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five hundred dollars. I'm surprised the folks in this town could raise that much cash. Well, folks didn't have to. Old Jesse Simmons felt so bad about his bank being robbed, he just put up all the reward money himself. Oh, well, now, wasn't that nice of him? You thinking what I'm thinking, boy? Huh? How come that robber didn't get all the money out of Jess Simmons' bank? Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? I'm putting my money in a safe place. I got a mighty low opinion of banks. Why is it I always keep forgetting you ain't the most sensible woman in the world? What you gonna do with the money? Thought I might file a claim on that land around my camp and settle down here permanent. Settle down when you got the most grub state money you ever had in your life? Yep, seems like a pretty good notion. I guess I'll go over there and file right now. You got your tonic, boy? All right, son. Sit down. You and I are gonna have a nice little talk. Good. It's high time. Now, of course, the most important thing now is where you hid the money. Nope. The most important thing is how come you put me in this jail cell in the first place? Oh, now, looky here, big fella. You don't expect to go around robbing banks and not get put in jail. I ain't robbed no bank. Well, what'd you run for if he wasn't guilty? Well, I didn't figure it was fitting to sit there and argue with you all day long about it with a rope around my neck. Well, I admit that feelings was running kind of high, but that ain't no reason why we can't sit and chat about it now. Fine. I'm Hoss Cartwright from Virginia City. Now, Roy Coffey sent me here to pick up Earl Tusher on account of, well, he accidentally hurt his hand. You hear me? Oh, I hear you, all right, but what's all that got to do with uh, where the money is hid? It ain't got nothing to do with money. Like I told you, I'm here to pick up Earl Tusher. Who's Earl Tusher? Earl Tusher? Your prisoner! 
Now, son, you can see you're the only prisoner I got. Look, you sent a telegram to Roy Coffee in Virginia City, and you told him you was holding Earl Tusha. Who's Roy Coffee? Who's Roy Coffee? Why, Roy Coffee, the sheriff in Virginia City, Nevada. Like I told you, he hurt his gun hand, and, and I'm down here to pick up Earl Tusher in his stead. Uh, can you read and write? Well, not the best in the world, I reckon, but uh, why do you ask? Well, it's a shame a fanciful fella like you ain't putting that stuff down for folks to read. <laughs> Looney, you mean to say you filed claim on that mountain of rock you've been camping on all these years? That's the right of it. What crop are you figuring on getting out of it? Gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, howdy, Miss Simmons. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Oh, Miss Looney. Howdy. Hey, I understand that you delivered the culprit to the sheriff. I brought in House Cartwright. Well, good for you. What about the money? There wasn't any. There wasn't any? Oh, well, that's bad. We may not be able to find the place where he hid it, you know. Oh, oh, Looney figures maybe Cartwright didn't do it. Well, now, that's interesting. How does she figure that? Well, says it'd be pretty hard for a man to rob a bank in the middle of the night without making a speck of noise, unless he had a key. But that's ridiculous. Nobody has the key to the bank but me. That's what we told her. Well, perhaps Miss Looney will solve the mystery for us. Yeah, Looney. Who done it? He did. <laughs> for a minute, I thought you took her seriously, huh? Well, anything for a laugh. Oh, Looney, you are the one. You are the one. as far as accepting violence. And then Looney walks into town with Cartwright just as pretty as you please, and she blames me for the bank robbery. I know, I know. But, but what are we going to do now? The smart thing. Take the money and get out. Oh, just like that? Without a word? Yeah, that's right. I'll ride out now and get the money. Tomorrow we'll leave on the stage. A business trip. No, I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> What is that stuff? It's tonic. You want to try a little of it? Uh, much obliged. That ain't bad. <laughs> now, now look here, boy. Folks have had a time to cool off. Now, they ain't so much concerned about what happens to you as they are about getting back their money. So if you'll just tell me where you hid the money, things will go a lot easier on you. Sheriff, like, a, like I've been trying to tell you, they ain't... There ain't no way I can tell you where that money is, because I don't know where that money is. And I ain't had nothing to do with no bank robbery. Then what were you doing here? Like I said, I was here to fetch Earl Tusher. Look here. Folks just ain't going to believe that story. Now, you'd be a sight better off if you just uh, come clean. Howdy, Sheriff. Uh, you want to see the prisoner? No, Sheriff. I come to see you. Well, what do you want? Well, I figure it's high time you got down to business and put Simmons and that ward feller in jail. Now, see here, Looney, you going around talking like that, people are going to think you're... Well, just don't go talking like that. How many times I got to tell you? Simmons robbed his own bank. It don't make no difference how many times you tell me. It just don't make no sense. Any short tale young going to tell you, it's the only thing that does make sense. 
Well, I got no time to argue. I got to go home to supper. But that stage leaves first thing in the morning. You got to arrest him tonight. No, I don't. I got to get home. Ain't you afraid they'll get away? I'm more afraid of Emma. Besides, she's having pot roast. Well, it appears like that there's to be any sheriffing done tonight. It's up to me to do it. I see. And just uh, what would you do? Well, first off, I'd let that poor innocent boy out of jail. Well, shucks now. We don't want no innocent folks in jail, do we? And then me and the boy here would go out, round up them rascals red-handed, and take back the money. Well, now, that strikes me as a pretty sound program. Why don't you do that, Looney? You take care of that, and I'll go home and take care of the pot roast. Come on, boy. But Miss Looney, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Well, ma'am, I, I ain't too anxious about getting shot over breaking out of jail. You ain't breaking out of jail, boy. You heard what the sheriff said, word for word. Yes, but didn't it strike you as a little peculiar the way he said it? Well, if a body held off doing something every time something sounded peculiar, it's hard to say what would ever get done. Yeah, I reckon you're, you're right at that, but just walking out of jail like... That ain't no way to talk, boy. Besides, we got him worried. We have? Yeah. What happened? Well, just like I said, Simmons and Ward robbed the bank. How'd you find that out? I overheard him talking. Come on. Light in Simmons' office. They're in there, all right. Well, let's go in there and get them. Caught it, boy. Remember your fever. You go around front. I'll go in this way and scare them so they'll bust out the front way and then you'll catch them. <laughs> Ma'am, it seems might more likely to me if they'll bust out this back door. Well, I'd feel a sight easier in my mind if I knew you was out front. But, Ma'am, if... You gonna stand here jawing all night or you gonna do like I said? Yes, What was that? What? Well, I thought I heard something. so nosy to find out what's going on in there, go on in. Here's that noise you heard. Oh, dear, now what do we do? I'll kill her like I should have before. Well, you don't think I come here by myself, do you? Well, you did, didn't you? Of course not. She's lying. No, no, no. No, she ain't. One thing I found out about this old woman, she always tells the truth. You gotta ask her things just right. How many people are out there? 743, last count. That's the population. I know, I know. How many people are outside waiting for us to come out? Well, well, now, if you mean... Now, you the... know perfectly well what he means. How many men came with you? Come on, come on. You figuring to shoot me or poke me to death? Don't poke her. Don't poke her. Well, I ain't particular about details. But if I don't get a straight answer quick, I'm going to start something right soon. Now, for the last time, how many men came with you? The pure truth. One. Where is he? Well, like I told you, he's outside. I know he's outside. Is he in the front or the back? Of the bank? Of course, of the bank. This bank. Well, I just wanted to get your meaning clear. Well? Well, what? Shooter. Oh, is the man who came with you in the front or the back? Neither. Boy, boy, was I glad to see you. Yep, I uh, reckon I got here just in time, huh? How'd you happen to come after me? Well, I figured you was in trouble when they didn't come busting out. You figured that out all by yourself? And you got in here without making a speck of noise. Yep. I stand out there in front, and just like you said, bam. 
The fever left me. I declare, boy, there just ain't no end to wonders. <laughs> yep. Well, that is the wildest story I ever heard in my life. Yep. Everything turned out all right. I got the two crooks. That's right. It's caught double the number you started out after. Yeah. I sort of feel bad about old Earl Tusher, though. I'll, I'll ride in town first thing in the morning and tell Roy about it, and I'll get right on my way after him. Oh, I, I don't think Roy will appreciate that offer too much, Oss. Yeah, but why, Paul? That this tonic that Miss Looney gave me, why, it cured my fever just bam, like that. Now, any time I feel it coming on, I just take a big swig of it. Oh, well, uh, we'll talk about that in the morning. Huh? So go to bed now. Yeah. for molasses. that knock at the door? Well, I suppose that means me, huh? I don't know why I had to be born the youngest. So you could have respect for the elders, that's why. That's right. Hop to it, Sonny. <clears throat> Would you please, son? As long as you put it that way, Papa. Mr. Armstead. Good evening, Joe. How are you? Well, Ben, good evening. Hello. How are you? Frank? Hoss? Well, I'll see you, Ben. Howdy, Howdy. How's business in Virginia City? Howdy, Ben. Howdy. Adam. Howdy. Well, sit down, gentlemen. Sit down. Please. Yeah, thank you. Like some coffee? Say, how about a drink? Uh, uh, no, uh, thank you, Ben. We appreciate your hospitality, but this is not a social visit. We're here on a matter of some importance. Huh? It's about Roy Coffee. Nothing's happened to Roy, has it? Something has happened to Roy Coffee. He's grown old. He's used up. Well, that's sort of a rough way of putting it, isn't it? There's no time for sentiment, Ben. I'm concerned with something a lot more important. Money. Dollars and cents. Now, we're businessmen, all of us, including you. We've got money invested around here, good money, and we need law to protect our property. Well, it seems to me that Roy's done a pretty good job up to now. What about from now on? No, he's slowing up. Look at that bullet he took from that drunk drifter a couple of weeks ago. Now, that is not the kind of sheriff I want protecting my property. Well, oh, Roy's always been a... Whatever he's been, right now he's an old fuddy-duddy. Gentlemen, Virginia City is growing. It's not a one-cow town anymore. Now, running that sheriff's office is a business. It has to be handled efficiently. Have you been in that office of Roy's lately? That looks like a compost heap. He's got loose papers flying all over the place. He's got wanted posters he probably hasn't even looked at. Tell him about the Wagner gang. You see, I've got a young wife, and I... What about the Wagner gang? They've been operating all around here, Ben. Shooting up towns, sticking up banks, molesting private citizens. They'll be hitting Virginia City sooner or later. You can put your money on that. And Roy Coffee is not the man to handle him. Now, wait a minute. I think you're selling Roy Coffee a little short. You stay out of this, young fella. When I want your opinion, I will ask for it. Well, you're going to get my opinion when you start talking down Roy Joseph. Coffey. Joseph. Please, gentlemen. Now, let's stop arguing and just get to the point, huh? All right, Frank. What is the point? Well, Ben, we just thought we'd drop in. We've been talking about this thing, and... Uh, 
Well, you, Adam, Carter, and I are the four members of the city council. And... Well, Ben, the point is, Carter and I feel that Roy Coffey should be replaced. Well, I'm afraid I don't agree with you. You don't. Uh... All right. Let's ask a more experienced man. What about you, Ben? There's something I've got to think about, certainly. What are we going to do for protection for Virginia City while you are making up your mind, Ben? Now, wait a minute. Armistead said that this was a council matter, and I don't believe you are a member of the council. No, but I'm one of the citizens that voted you in, and I can be one of the citizens that vote you out. Now, let's calm down, gentlemen. We'll get anything accomplished by losing our tempers. And Ben's right. So let's get down to just the facts. Ben, we are the four members of the city council. But in order to make a decision, we have to have a majority. Now, Carter and I both feel that coffee should go. But we need your votes. Now, how long is it going to take you to make your decision? I'm going to need a little time to think about it. All right, so you need a little time to think about it. Well, will you at least agree to a temporary solution? Depends on what that solution is. Well, considering the crisis we have on our hands... Uh, what crisis? The Wagner gang, that's what crisis. Uh, Adam, I think Browning is speaking for the majority of the town. They're very much concerned, and we've got to do something about it. Now, since you won't give us your vote to oust copy, then we're asking you to come in temporarily as his assistant, at least until the four of us can reach an agreement. Assistant? Well, as his deputy. Armistead Roy Covey's been a friend of ours for a long time. An old friend. I can't just barge in there and tell him how to do his job. Then give us your vote to replace him. You can't have it both ways, Cartwright. If you're so afraid of hurting this old friend of yours, you ought to protect him against hurting the town. It's a good solution, Adam. The town will feel safer and give your father time to think it over. All right, I'll try it. Good man. Good man. Well, gentlemen, I think we Good need to impose Brian. further on your hospitality. You've made me feel much better, Adam. You see, with this young wife of mine and the oh, Wagner gang operating around. Come on, Carter. Here. Come on. Good night, Joe. Good night, gentlemen. I think you did the right thing, Adam. If there's going to be trouble, Roy may really need some help. Well, I sure don't look forward to telling him. No, well, I know, but still, I can't help worrying about Roy handling somebody as, well, as tough as the Wagner gang all by himself. Well, maybe Roy ought to get himself a good fast gun for a deputy. Well, that's Adam's job. Find out what Roy is really capable of handling these days. Oh, who knows how tough that Wagner gang really is, anyhow. <laughs> Lots of work to do, just look at that desk. Paperwork, it's a lot of nonsense and a big waste of time, but that's the way it is now. I used to run this office, no paperwork at all. Now a man could just about drown himself in it. Would you believe that I spend more than half my time just to reading and writing? Not to ruin a man's eyes. Now somebody's been messing around at my desk. I left my glasses right here in plain sight. Adam. What's they? 
Something that you want to see me about? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I'll be with you in a minute. There was a letter that I should have answered here. Now look at that. This joker was killed over in Red Bank more than three months ago. Here it is now. Here's that letter. Sheriff called Virginia City. We were holding Red Thomas for the number of uh, murder of Jim Bannon. I want to talk to you. About what? Uh, about helping you. About helping me? <laughs> what kind of talk is that? Well, I thought I could do some uh, work around here, you know, as sort of an assistant. I sure am much obliged to you, Adam, but I don't need no help. I I had a couple of deputy sheriffs, a time or two, but uh, all they did was about get in my way. Oh, I just thought, you know, on account of the wound, you know. Adam, I, I'm just sick and tired of hearing about that wound. I was just a little nick in the flesh, and these people seem to be more pained about it than I am. Yeah, well, the thing is, the, uh, well, the town council, uh... Oh, drat the town council. What are they dithering about now? Wait a minute. You remember that town council, ain't you? Maybe this is your idea, huh? No, no, no. I, but I was outvoted, and so I had to go along with the idea, you know. Just, what was this idea? Well, well they feel you need some help. They feel that I need some help. Adam, will you stop bothering me and go back to Ponderosa, give you a nice paw and them brothers to you in my regards, huh? Roy, I would consider it a personal favor if you would let me stay around. It's going to be pretty embarrassing if I have to tell the town council that you threw me out. <laughs> Seeing as how I let them swear me in. Let them swear you in? Yeah, it's a sort of deputy. Adam, you serious about this? That's a fine. How do you do it? Just help out with the paperwork or something, you know? All right, you can stay around if you're minded, do some paperwork, but all I'm going to ask is that you stay out of my way and don't bother me, huh? Now I'll get back to this letter. I just want you to stay out of my way. You said you wanted to do some paperwork, and I said, fine, there's papers there, there's papers here, there's papers there, there's papers everywhere. Feels about to wipe off my feet before I come inside. <laughs> Thank you. Sure done a job on straightening this place out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to recommend you to counsel for town housekeeper. Don't do me any favors. But it is. It's a, it's a lot more efficient than it was. There's a place for everything and everything in its place. It, 
Kind of reminds me of the way Mary used to run her kitchen. You never did no more wife, did you? No. Well, Adam, let me just say this. It's kind of rough when you build your whole life around something or somebody and then lose it. After my wife died, I, I was really lost. Maybe if we had some children, it wouldn't have been so bad. But she was the only family I had, so that's why I had to go out and get myself another family. Another family? Yeah. People of Virginia City, they've been my family for years now. It's my job to take care of them. And from what I hear, they're going to need that care real soon. How do you mean that? Well, old town's talking about this uh, Wagner gang that's supposed to show up here in a few days. Don't you ever fret about that Wagner gang. I can take care of that scum, believe me. And I'm not going to let them harm my town in no way. You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. telling you trouble is coming. What we want to know is, what are you doing about it? Doing? We have got to do something about the Wagner gang. Now, there's going to be a showdown and a bloody one. What do you plan to do about it? Well, the only thing I plan to do is to avoid a showdown, especially a bloody one. You call that doing your job? Yeah, that's what I call it. The only thing is, I believe you gentlemen are a little confused as to just what my job is. What are you talking about? My job is to protect the people of Virginia City, not to get them killed. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll stretch my legs a little. Well, you need any more proof? Proof of what? That you've got to vote Roy Coffee out of here and put in a man who knows what he's doing. I think Roy knows what he's doing. And we know what he's doing, too. Nothing! I don't understand you, Adam. The biggest depositors in the Virginia City Bank are you Cartwrights. If the Wagner gang cleans out that bank, you stand to be the biggest losers. Well, if we're not worried, maybe you shouldn't be either. some bars in that window. Have you taken leave of your senses? Well, I don't think so. Do you expect the Wagner gang to just come crawling in through the window? Windows of a bank that nobody's making any effort to defend? What's to keep them from just walking right in through that front door? Well, nothing, I guess. Roy, for heaven's sake. And you, Adam Cartwright. Helping with this nonsense. No, oh, you just wait till I spread this piece of news around. Sure spends a lot of time getting mad, don't he? Yeah. Well, mad as a wet hen. Came out of the office later and said that he and Carter and Browning were going to come out here later on this evening. Well, we're always happy to extend our hospitality to members of the town council. Well, I think there's something I ought to tell you before they get here. What's that? Well, things are getting pretty tense in town. I may be headed for trouble, I don't know. But I've decided to stand with Roy all the way. If I'm wrong, I may need your help. And I don't know whether I really have the right to ask for it, because the only thing I've got backing me up is my feeling for Roy and uh, well, just my faith in the man. Roy hasn't come up with any plan, but I was going to handle the Wagner gang if they do show up. 
Well, now, I don't know. We spent the greater part of the afternoon putting bars on the bank windows, so he must have some kind of a plan. Well, Roy's an old friend. We all have faith in him. What about the folks in town? Well, there's a lot of talk about the Wagner gang. They all feel sure that they're coming, and uh, they have quite a few doubts about Roy. Yeah, Brownie's influence him. Oh, yeah, he's been uh, talking a lot against Roy these past few days, that's for sure. There's always somebody who thinks a fast gun is the only way to settle things. Ah, oh, trouble is people believe him. I've lived pretty close to Roy these past few days. And I believe in him. No matter how he wants to handle that Wagner gang. You want to know if we're in back of you? Well, I agree with you. I think you'll find that the boys and I'll be with you if you need us. Thank you. That must be the duly elected representatives. Good evening, Ben. How's Ben? Adam. Adam. All right. Ben, Adam told me you were coming. <clears throat> well, uh, sit down, gentlemen. Ben, we have got to have your decision on Roy Coffey right now. You mean uh, Adam's decision and mine? No, yours. We know how Adam feels. I warn you, Ben, the town is in no mood for any more shilly-shallying. Well, Mr. Browning, maybe you can tell me what, uh, what the town is in the mood for. Just this, that we get rid of Roy right now. Fire him. Swear in anybody, anybody who's man enough to do what has to be done, which is to strap on a gun, swear in the biggest posse he can raise, and stand ready to shoot it out with the Wagner gang if one of them so much as sticks his nose into Virginia City. After all, we got to protect our women. <laughs> ben, this is no reflection on your family. This is nothing personal. We're just here in the best interest of the community as council members. Well, as a member of that council, I think it's in the best interest of the community to uh, retain the services of Roy Coffey as sheriff. What? Ben, don't you see, by withholding your vote on this, you are reducing the council to absolute helplessness. Well, I don't see how putting our trust in Roy Coffey reduces us to absolute helplessness. Now, maybe you think that the work of a sheriff should be done by a younger man. But as far as I'm concerned, a fast gun has never taken the place of experience or the wisdom that comes from that experience. Ben, I have said it before and I'll say it again. We voted you in, and we can vote you out. Yes, you can vote us out. Come election time next spring. We do not have to wait till next spring to get protection for ourselves. Now, if the council won't do it, and if that has-been shell of a sheriff won't do it, we can do it ourselves. Then, trouble is going to come of this. And when it comes, it's going to land right on your shoulders, yours and Adam's. The town knows how Carter and I feel. Yeah, I guess we all know how you feel, Frank. If any harm comes to my wife... Oh, come on, Carter. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about your wife. Well, thanks for backing me up. I was backing up your faith in my coffee. And I know how dangerous that can be. I'd understand if you changed your mind. I won't change my mind. some news. Yeah, what is it? The Wagner gang was seen not 15 miles from here the day before yesterday. Well, Fred, what are you getting all bent out of shape for? They're 15 miles away from here. They're certainly not in Virginia City, are they? Now, that is typical of your thinking. Well, how do you think I ought to think? 
Virginia City is on the way up. It's growing. It's attracting new business. Now, what do you think is going to happen when it gets known that business gets no protection from the now, law? what are you talking I... about business gets no protection? What, what's going on here? You mean these? Yes, I mean those. Well, little Jerry Wilson was practicing, and he locked me in the cuffs. And then he went down the street to get some candy. He must have took the key with him, because I couldn't find it here anywhere. I never heard of anything so ridiculous in my life. The sheriff of an important town, sitting around handcuffed, and a gang of bank robbers on our very doorstep. Son, be careful. What's he so mad about, Mr. Coffee? Oh, I think he's just a little nervous about that Wagner gang. Pooh, you could handle them with your hands tied. Well, now, maybe we hadn't better go that far, huh? Unlock me, will you, son? Sure. It's no secret. We all know it. The Wagner gang is coming. Now, what is the council doing about it? Nothing. What is our so-called sheriff doing about it? Nothing. Now, since we obviously can't depend on the council or on the sheriff, I say let's organize to protect ourselves. Roy Coffey's been taking care of this town for years. For too many years. I say it's time someone younger, someone more capable takes over. Now we have got to do something. It's a matter of self-preservation. I say we stick with the law. There is no law against protecting our homes, our property. There is no law against acting like men. There is no law that says a man can't stand up for what's right and fight. Right. Now, if you men. Hey, Mr. Browning. May I say a word, please? Sir? Uh, go on home, Grandpa. It's way past your bedtime. Go on home, old man. That's the sheriff's dog. Let's see what old Grandpa has to say. Let's find out why we should all be cowards. This could be very interesting. Thank you, sir. Friends, I don't want to take much of your time. I just want to say that I've been sheriff here for, well, since before a lot of you were born. I've always given you my best. And as far as I know, I never let you down. I never asked anything in return because all I was doing was my job. But now I am. I'm, I'm going to ask you for something. I'm going to ask you to let me handle this thing in my own way. Please, do this one thing for me. Let me handle it. That's all you've got to say? That's all. Well, I am buying drinks for the men in this town. I don't mean the cowards. I mean the men. Come on. Uh, some people in this town sure spoiling for a fight, huh? Yeah, there's some bad ones, all right. What are you going to do about it? Well, Adam, like I told you, they're a part of the town, and the town's my family. Now, if you've got some bad children in the family, they're still your children. You got to protect them, even from themselves. Trouble? Uh, it's got a cold creek. It's a pushover, Wagner. Then I went by Virginia City. Virginia City? Nobody told you to go there. 
I know. But it's got the biggest bank in the whole territory. And I don't see why we don't hit it instead of all this penny ante stuff. The sheriff of Virginia City is a man named Roy Coffey. He's been around a long time. That means he's been plenty smart. And tough. You saying you're afraid of him, Wagner? <laughs> I ain't saying no such thing. Ain't a sheriff living I'm afraid of. Look, Wagner, I scouted that town today, and I saw your famous Roy Coffey. He's an old man. All right. Virginia City's next. But I'm telling you one thing. It ain't gonna be easy. Old man. Or no old man. talk to you. I'm busy. It's important. Now, can't you see I'm busy? Later. No, Roy, no. All right. Enough is enough. Adam. Now, I've been going along with this silly game of letting you play lawman just because the town council thinks I need a little help. But now you're really getting in my way. You're forgetting that I'm the sheriff here. Not for long. What? What do you mean by that? Roy, I was hoping I didn't have to tell you, but... You're gonna be replaced. Replaced? You're pulling my leg. I wish I was. But this is my job. Nobody's gonna take my job. Oh, yes, they are. Half the council has voted to let you go. But they can't do that. I'm a duly elected... Yes, they can, Roy. Just as soon as they vote me in power of the council, you go. After all these years? Roy, I know how you must feel. And it's not much thanks for all those years. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I thought the council would change their mind. You know, Roy, you spend most of your life protecting this family, as you call it. Like a lot of families, they don't appreciate what you've done. But aside from that, I think we ought to try and look at this thing from every angle. Now, I'm not saying that you're not a good sheriff, but you know you shouldn't have gotten shot by that drunk. But I don't think it could have happened five years ago. You know, it's nothing to be ashamed of, but, man, we do get slower as we go along. It's no, uh, it's no disgrace to need glasses, draw the gun a little slower. Adam, you don't understand either. None of you do. There's nobody in this whole town that understands my job. Now, if I didn't think that I could do a good job, I'd quit. Now, out of my way and let me get on with it. Far enough. 
<laughs> Roy says he doesn't want any shooting, so there's not going to be any shooting. But the Wagner gang's on the way in. Well, let him come. This business is going to go just the way Roy wants it to go. Then let him ride right into town and take over? If that's what Roy wants. We don't care what Roy wants. We're the town and... You're not the town. You're just a bunch of Brownies roughnecks. All right, drop your guns. You too. Now, go on back to your homes. What do you think he's up to? I don't know. Let's find out. Famous sheriff, Virginia City. You give up carrying your guns? That's right. Ain't gonna be no gunfight. Everybody run away? I ordered the town off the street, so go ahead, do what you come to do, and get on out. Nobody's gonna try and stop us. I don't want to see nobody get hurt. You're smart. Money ain't worth getting hurt for. Yes, sir. When you get old, you get smart. Money back here. Huh? You open the vault. Here. I can see that. Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. I tell you, the sheriff took it all away. Well, that's why nobody out there tried to stop us. All right, what did he do with the money? I don't know. He wouldn't even tell me. Well, you tell me. Let's get that old man. Listen to him talk. Wait a minute. Just in case we run into trouble out there, let's take him with us. He'll make a nice hostage.
was easy. How are we gonna get out? That old man. I'll kill him. My golly, Roy, you did it. It worked. Yep. And nobody got hurt in it. Let's get down. We don't want to give him nothing to shoot at. Just wasting ammunition. Wagner! Now listen to this. You can keep shooting all day if you're a minor, or for a week or for a month, but you ain't getting out of there. And you can keep on looking out through them bars till you starve to death. But if you prefer my jail where you'll get fed, just throw out your gun. <laughs> That's it. Fired. This is as good a time as any. Oh, now, Ben, I... Roy, that was a great piece of work. I understand that you want this. I told him you were going to get a better man for the job, somebody with a faster gun. Well, I sure feel better. About my wife, I mean. Avoiding all that violence and bloodletting. Guess it takes more than a fast gun to be a sheriff. Yep. Yeah. Takes a man. And it takes a man to admit his mistakes, too. And we made one. A bad one. Roy. I was wrong, Roy. I'm sorry. It's all right, Browning. Hi, Mr. Coffey. Hello, Jerry. Will you play bank robbers with me? Sure will, just as soon as I get my gun. No. My mommy doesn't want me to play with guns anymore. I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe your mommy's got something. Come on, let's go for that walk, huh? <laughs> Hi. 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 Hi.